is this King of glory? I love the phrase in that question because it puts us back in a place of wonder. And it makes me think about the mystery of God. There is so much about Him and His glory that we may never know on this side of heaven, but one day we will know fully. Not only does the mystery of God keep us in a place of hunger to know Him, it also humbles our hearts to fear the Lord. God's glory is the radiance of His holiness. And we get a glimpse of this in Mark 4, 35 through 41 in the account when Jesus calms the storm. Let's read it. Mark 4:35. It's 4:35 starts and it says, "That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, "Let us go over to the other side." Let's pause here for a minute and recognize that before these disciples knew what was going to happen, the Lord told them where they were going. They had no problem believing that they were going to the other side when he said it then, but things took a turn and it rattled their faith. Let's continue. It says, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Remember just four verses ago, he told them where they were going because of the storm and circumstances around them, they forgot. We've all been there. When we're all calmly riding around in our boat, then one thing after the other. And now for me right now in this season, it's raising kids and not feeling like I'm up a creek without a paddle. I have to tell this story about my Chandler, my youngest daughter, she's four, she's precious, she's a gift. In this moment, I did question though, whether or not I was going to keep my salvation. We were in home goods, um, not really the place that I would prefer to shop with children, but I was optimistic that day. I told her and her sister that before we went, I would get them a treat. And so remember Jesus said, let's go to the other side. I had told them that I would get him a treat. So we were walking down the rows and she's four. So of course, everything was what she wanted. They were big, they were breakable. And all she kept saying was, mommy, I just want this, mommy, I just want this. And of course, my response was, no, don't touch that. That's when the wind started to blow. After a few minutes of me not telling her, she randomly said, I don't like that noise. And she's got a really cute voice. So I was just wondering, like, what are her innocent little ears hearing that my ears are not? Like, do I need a hearing aid? Am I at that point now? And that's okay. But with her saying, I don't like that noise, that was a wave starting to grow. And so I responded, I said, what noise, sis? I don't hear anything. Her response to me was a wave crashing on my face. She said, you talking, you talking. She, my four-year-old said that she didn't like the noise and it was me talking that she didn't like. She wasn't loud, she wasn't sassy in her tone. She was steady and matter of fact. There was a woman, oh, this sweet woman, just in the row right next to me. And she robotically just moved and then turned towards me and looked like we locked eyes. And she looked at me as if, mama, whatever you're gonna do, I'm a partner with you and I'm gonna have your back. Because in that moment, I felt like, does anybody care that my four-year-old just literally clapped back at me and I can't even quickly think enough like that? Does anybody care? Does anybody see this? And I felt like she was responding with her eyes. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody's here to, nobody's here to witness this except me, but I have your back. And I'm just really thankful that we were in a store that was surrounded with people and breakable things because I really wanted a Hulk out. But I'm kidding, I didn't do that. But this small, small storm, it is nothing in comparison to the grand scheme of things. If you can take a minute and think about your storm right now. The disciples were told they were going to the other side. When we have been told about the promises of God, that He works all things for the good, Romans 8, 28, that He will give us rest in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, that He protects us in Psalms 91, verse two, and that He cares for us in 1 Peter 5, verses six through seven. 
when we have eyes to see His glory in the midst of our storms and speak of His glory in our circumstances, it puts Him back in His rightful place on the throne of our heart, soul, and mind. And His glory, the radiance of His glory, lights up even the darkest of storms. And then we know He cares for us. When we talk about God's glory, I want us to be able to explain it. It was said like this before, that God's zeal for us to so think, us to so feel, and us to so act how glorious He is. We as humans are created in the image of God and can share or participate imperfectly in divine glory as image bearers in everything we do, say, and think. This is where the fear of the Lord versus the fear of our circumstances comes to mind. In verse 39, it picks up and it says, He got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Peace, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this man? The disciples shifted after three words were spoken, quiet, be still. The disciples ended up fearing him more than the storm. The Lord stilled the storm to a whisper and the waves of the sea were hushed. I know that for me, this makes me think about our faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And I know this, that sometimes we will not always see the storms coming, but God's glory appears when our certainty of who He is outshines it all. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for your glory. I thank you that we get to trust you, that we get to lay it all before you and say, we know you care and we love you, Lord. Let this be a time where we can reflect on the storms in our heart and in our minds and in our souls where we need to say we trust you, God, and we believe that you are going to see us through it. In Jesus' name, amen.